congregation on this New Year's Day. Our passage this morning is a familiar one for New Year's Day services, one that we have heard many, many times over the years, no doubt, uh, but one it, it is good to look at. I suppose that's why we look at it so often. This comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and uh, if, you, if you know it, you can sort of follow along. Perhaps you can even hum along with the song that you are familiar with, no doubt. Uh, if not, turn in your scriptures to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, right away at the beginning of verse 1 there, in which the writer of Ecclesiastes, whom we think is Solomon, uh, says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on him, on men. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better than for men to be happy and do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. That is the gift of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, Despite this passage being so well known, there are some difficulties with this passage. For example, there are some big questions that come up from this passage. Is Solomon saying in this passage that, that there is a right time for all of these things? Is there a proper time for them? And are those the same thing? Is Solomon saying that all of the things in this list are good? And so that when it is the right time for war, that is a good thing to go to war. Is Solomon saying that there is a good time to tear and a good time to mend? Is Solomon saying that there is a good time to kill and a good time to to heal. Well, we have some difficulty in language there. First of all, the, the, the word good that I just used a number of just uh, a number of different times uh, is a difficult word in our language. It, it is sometimes almost meaningless, it seems, because we can mean both good as in morally right. It is the right thing to do. But we can also mean good as in it tastes good, it's pleasing, and we can also mean good as in it's a job well done, and we can also mean good as in appropriate, and, and, and so we have to pull that apart a little bit. If when we look at this, uh, we say that there is an appropriate time for these things, then, then maybe, yeah, in a way. See, Solomon is not actually really focused on the morality of these things, the, the rightness or the wrongness of these things. His point is rather that these are things that are largely out of our control, but that they are 
very much within God's plan. That that is why we follow on through verses 9 to 13 and beyond to look at how sovereign and powerful God is. That God appoints seasons and times for all of these things. Does that mean, uh, again, that because God appoints seasons and times for these things, that all of these things are good as in morally right? No, it means rather that God uses all of those things, things that human beings often do that are bad, for the good of those who love him. And we've heard that over and over again, that God has a plan, and that plan is to bring humanity out from the darkness of their own self-imposed sin and ignorance and into the light of his kingdom. And sometimes people, individuals, and society as a whole need to go through some pretty dark times in order to see the light, as it were. And so God says what is going to happen and when. And often we cannot understand it. That is why we hear in verse 11 that God has set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. We we see particular events, but we see those particular events from our own very limited perspective. Whereas, of course, God sees all of these things from his infinite perspective. And so if Solomon is not trying to say that there is a good, as in morally right, time for all of these things necessarily, if that's not his point, then what is his point? What is Solomon saying to us on this New Year's Day? Well, Solomon is saying to us the same thing that Solomon was saying to the people who wrote or who read Ecclesiastes in the first place. Solomon is saying to us that we need to have perspective. That there is a simplicity of life that is good. And and what is that simplicity of life? Well, Solomon says that everyone may eat, this is verse 13, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. And before that, in verse 12, I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live. So, now, we come up with another problem. Is Solomon saying, hey, look, you know, it doesn't matter what happens. You just need to blissfully, ignorantly walk along, happy as a clam. And if if you're not happy because of your circumstances, then fake it till you make it, buddy. Just pretend you're happy. Paste on that fake Christian smile and and just carry on. Is that what Solomon is saying? That even if we're not happy, we should pretend to be happy? No. No. That's not what Solomon is saying. Solomon is not saying that it is inherently sinful to be unhappy in one's circumstances per se. But he is saying that there is a wisdom and a depth and a simplicity to discovering and accepting the reality of this world. 
the reality of this world in which much, if not almost everything, is actually out of our control. You see, <clears throat> when we pretend that there are things in this world that are in our control, then we can get very frustrated. We can get very upset. When I believe that it is in my control, the well-being of my family, then when they get sick or when they do poorly on their report cards or, or, or when they, they have boyfriend or girlfriend troubles or when they are angry at one another, then I can get frustrated. And you can get frustrated. Why? Because we are living under the delusion that we are somehow in control. And when things go wrong, we assume that, that we get frustrated with our control being broken. <laughs> As if we ever had any control on those things at all. Likewise, excuse me, likewise with <clears throat> all the other circumstances in our life, if we believe that we have control over them and then things go wrong, then we're very frustrated and upset and angry and so on. But if we accept that God will send our way whatever God will send our way, and if we hold our hands open to receive from him whatever he sends, then we can live in a kind of contentment that people who seek to control their circumstances can never have. We can be happy in that way. I think this is maybe a little bit of what goes on in the parable of the Good Samaritan. There, there are several things that we notice about that parable, of course, one of them being the fact that it is a Samaritan, a supposed enemy, who actually comes to the aid of the person who has been robbed, and he's the neighbor. And the whole point of the thing is that everybody is our neighbor, even our enemies. But also, um, but also we notice that the people who pass him by are people who are religious people, who are educated people, who are people who, in a lot of ways, ought to know better, <laughs> really. But I wonder, too, if perhaps the people who passed by were busy people trying to control their environments. You've had that before, haven't you? I have. We see somebody on the side of the road stopped and we're just in too much of a hurry to pull over and help them out. Or we notice somebody in the store struggling with getting something off the shelf or, or, or having a bit of a misunderstanding with the cashier or, or just struggling in some way. And we ignore it. We pretend it isn't happening. We tell ourselves, I don't have time for this. I have stuff I have to do. I'm on a schedule. And really what we're trying to do is we are trying to control our worlds. And yet the Samaritan, the Samaritan is receiving, receptive enough of what comes his way that he is able to stop and help. Right? This is what Solomon says. I know that there is nothing better for men, for people, than to be happy and do good while they live. And so the Samaritan can do that. 
Now, I don't know, of course, him being a fictional character in a parable told by Jesus. I don't know whether the Samaritan was actually happy. But wouldn't that be great? If you or I, if we could receive whatever God gives us for the day, whether it fits our plans or not, and we could contentedly and happily do good with that thing. That would both acknowledge the sovereignty of God in bringing to us whatever God brings us, but also would acknowledge our very limited control and use what small control we do have for the good. And so, brothers and sisters, what Solomon is saying to us is, of course, the same thing that God is saying to us for this year 2021. That we need to recognize God's sovereignty, recognize our own tiny, tiny control, and receive from God whatever he gives so that we may do good with it and enjoy the gift that it is. So, brothers and sisters, may you receive whatever God brings in your life today and tomorrow and throughout 2021, may you receive whatever God gives you as a gift. And may you do good with it. May you enjoy the labors God gives you. May you be happy in doing those good things. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we come into this year 2020, we pray, 2021, excuse me, we pray that you will guide us in this year, that we may see all of those opportunities that you bring our way, things that are completely out of our control, but are in yours. May we relinquish our foolish thoughts that we have control over so many things, and may we live contentedly receiving from you what you give. May we then respond by doing good with it. Instead of being frustrated at our control being taken away, may we be glad for the opportunities that you give us. May we see in the stranger's face your face. May we see in the car on the side of the road the opportunity to do good and be glad. May we see it in the frustrations of our family life not the opportunity to be angry and frustrated that our children have gotten angry and frustrated with each other, but rather may we see the opportunity to show them a good way. May we take joy at the opportunity to teach and to grow and to learn, and may we take those opportunities wherever they may be to toil, to do good things. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.